Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the uh, next session in the GSM Free Week. This session will be uh, on the sharing session by Dr. Shazirawati binti Muhammad Muzi on the topic Students Engagement Strategies. Um, okay. uh, and students Engagement Strategies to Minimize Barriers in Online Learning. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, thank you very much to uh, Dr. Shazirawati uh, for, uh, for uh, accepting for the sharing session and thank you everybody for joining this session. So, loosely speaking, students' engagement is any form of interaction between students and lecturers. We greet them at the hallway, come early to the class to have short and sweet catch-up, give lectures and ask questions. Uh, we also receive feedback directly in the class, say a few minutes late to answer questions and so on. Okay, so those are if, uh, effortlessly done in the physical classes, but with the online classes, they are not easy and become one of the challenges for us as educators. So today, in this session with Dr. Shazira, we want to explore more in the context of students' engagement so that we can plan better uh, or at least to understand our students better. So, Dr. Shazira, are you ready for uh, to start our discussion? Good. All right. Okay. So, okay, to get started, Dr. Shazira, what do you want to say about the barriers in the online learning and how they are connected with the students' engagement in the class? Right. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Dr. Hazira, for moderating the sessions today. And thank you, everyone, uh, for sparing your time for uh, this session today. So I will be talking about uh, students' engagement strategies to minimize uh, barriers on uh, in the uh, online learning, okay? specifically for uh, online classes or uh, online learning. So we know that uh, online learning or online classes by its nature already present the barriers okay? because we know online classes meaning uh, distance learning experience. Okay, So the distance itself is already the obstacles, already the barrier. Okay, And then um, if you look through, okay, so these are the barriers, the common barriers or the challenges that our students uh, are facing. So this is what I get when I ask them, what are your top barriers or your top challenges in the online learning? Okay, so since they already uh, um, uh, passed through the, the experience of online learning in the previous semester, so it's okay to ask them. So these are the, the answers. Okay, there are actually 100 plus of, of them. Okay, but I just picked uh, some of them because um, they are basically revolve around the same, okay, same answers. So, of course, we know that the top barrier would be the internet connection. They, they have the internet connection, but uh, somehow with a limited access. Okay? Not, not all of them have the high-speed connection okay? um, broadband at home. Okay? Um, uh, they have the internet, but some of them uh, limited in terms of the quota, okay? hotspots uh, uh, quota, because they have to connect, uh, use the um, uh, hotspot okay? uh, based on their handphone, okay? connect to the laptop. Okay? And then uh, some of them uh, do not have motivation because they are basically alone, okay? basically uh, literally alone in the learning process. Okay? Uh, uh, have problem with the focus, okay? uh, uh, does not have feel uh, of studying because they are basically on the bed saja. Okay? Uh, bangun pagi pun, um, mungkin tak mandi pun, just turn on, uh, uh, join the class. Okay? So the 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 feeling going to the class itu kurang tak ada okay so the motivation uh, to learn is very low okay some of them um uh, have, uh, have problem at home okay unconducive uh, home environment okay distraction at a home um uh, uh, have commitment as a, a daughter as son okay to do the house chores need to assist another siblings Okay, so those are the things that basically our students are facing, okay, and this is true. And um, those uh, barriers basically can be categorized into these four 
categories, the technical part, okay, and the internet thing, the device, the facility, and so on. And also on the social part, okay, students uh, feel, uh, have feeling of isolation, okay, uh, working alone in the process, okay, uh, of the process of learning, uh, fail to stay in touch okay, with the lecturer, um, and um, um, become anxious because they didn't get the immediate feedback yeah, from from the lecturer, unlike the physical class, they can basically get the feedback directly from the lecturer. Yeah, and because of the barriers, because of the distance uh, barrier, okay, they may not get the immediate feedback. Yeah, and also in the emotional part, okay, poor time management skill. They don't have the peer influence. It's not that. Yeah, unlike the physical class, uh, uh, they have their friends. Yeah, bangun pagi ada kawan kejutkan, ada kawan ajak pergi kelas and so on. But it's not happen. It's not happen in the online classes. So they are basically on their own. Okay, independent learning can be stressful. Okay, students uh, feel disconnected. Yeah, and also in the environment part. Okay, and unconducive, an uh, unconducive environment. Student uh, may not have their own feeling, uh, 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 learning space at home. In fact, I have um quite a uh, long confession from one of the students where um, he has uh, many siblings okay he's the younger so he don't have he didn't have the uh, the learning space it's not there for him so he is basically learning at the living room sleep at the living room uh, uh, have class at the living room what test what assignment basically at the living room and then have many siblings, uh, distraction, noises, and so on. So it is actually stressful yeah, for this uh, type of student, right? So by uh, knowing all of these barriers, we know that these barriers are basically will lead to the poor engagement, the okay, poor engagement in the class, all right? So um, what can we do? Okay, so when we know the barriers that our students are facing, what can we do? What, what, what are our next steps? Okay, so if we look at, at these uh, barriers here, so we can see, we can categorize basically. There are things that we can control, okay? We can do something about it. And there's another part that we cannot do anything. It, it, they are out of our capabilities, okay? So, we have this list basically in our mind or even in a proper written, okay? Things that we can control, things that we cannot control. For example, if if, if many of the students say the, the, the barriers that they are facing is internet connection, limited internet connection. So uh, for that problem, okay, what do you think, okay? If you can control that one or you cannot control that one, if the students say uh, a limited internet connection, what would be your reaction? Okay. I, I just want to, to know your uh, which part yeah, you are, whether you can control the, in, the internet uh, barrier or you cannot control. Okay. So you can type one okay, in the chat room if you think you can do something okay, about the internet connection or type zero if you cannot do anything. You can uh, put it in the chat room. Students with the internet problem, is there anything that you can do about it? If you so, think you can do, then you type one. If you think that is uh, out of your capabilities, you type zero. So we have a one from Dr. Farhana Johar. Yeah. Means that we, we can do something. Yeah. How about... How about, How about others? One. Okay. One means we can control, right? Yeah. Okay. We can do something about we it. We can do something. Okay. So. So I think. Uh, yes. Yeah, so for now, all uh, voted run. one. Okay. All voted one. So when. So basically, there are no uh, right or wrong answer. It is our within our capabilities. If we think we can control, then we are on the left side. 
if we cannot control then we are on the right side but i believe if you if you put one you already have something in your mind okay that something in your mind is basically your strategies already okay what do you want to do what do you want to do to minimize that barrier this is that maybe you want to detail a, uh, a bit yeah, on what you are going to do but the first thing is you already know that you basically can help the student to minimize the barrier okay so that's uh, i think the uh, relation okay by knowing uh, what your student are facing okay in terms of the barrier you can know okay you can know or you can uh, i mean that you can plan okay what's going to be next what are what i'm going to do and the learning process in the, what uh, how we are going to help them okay so i think that's the the answer to, to the first question yeah, that's it all right thank you Dr. Shazira. so uh from your sharing just now, we have uh, four main uh, barriers, which are technical, social, emotional, and environment. So I believe all the lecturers here are trying their best to overcome or at least to minimize the barriers. Okay, As we can see, there are uh, many uh, of them answered, uh, yes, uh, we can do something to control the barrier. Okay, So for the next question, to understand better about the student's engagement, uh, let's have this scenario, which I think most of our students behave this way in online classes. Well, at least for my class, it happened. Okay, so if a student shows up in the online class, barely speak, never asks us anything after the class in personal, but completed all the tasks that we ask, is that considered engaged in your point of view? All right. Uh, before, before we... Um conclude the answer to that okay let us see um what we call here the components okay the three components of student engagement i know we are we are uh, uh, in the uh, science area okay? at, at the first place this is not our concern it's, it's not our interest okay but actually along the process of, of finding uh, what are the best strategy what are the suitable activities to do in the online learning i came across this so i think it is worth uh, uh, sharing okay it is knowledge anyway right? so uh, the components of students engagement basically uh, we have three the first one is the behavioral okay anything that relate to the action lah. Okay, you can see the involvement of the student, the participation, uh, participation in the class. So that is the behavior. Okay, and the second one is the cognitive, anything that relate with the thought. Okay, uh, students' motivation, students' motivation, and the invest, uh, their investment in their own learning. Okay, maybe hard to to see this one, but uh, we can maybe we can see in terms of uh, uh, the assessment and so on. Okay, but it's actually the the the. Uh, uh, related to the brain, okay? the process of um, um, uh, analyzing so on under uh, uh, teaching materials. Okay? And also the, uh, the emotional, the, the anything that relate with the feeling. So these two, the cognitive and emotional, are basically hard okay, to be measured okay, in the online classes. Okay? Unlike the physical class, we can see the emotional part. Okay, we can see if the, the student happy, sad, okay, uh, seems lazy or not. We can we can see that clearly, but it is quite challenging for us to see or to measure in terms of emotional, okay, and also the uh, cognitive. So the, these are the three components. Okay, so uh, back to the back to the um, the barrier just now. Okay, so uh, we already know the barrier. So our plan. Okay, our plan in terms of engagement should be related to these three. How can we achieve these three? The behavior, the emotional, and also the cognitive. Okay, so in terms of behavior, we can see okay, in the in the online online class context, we can measure, of course, by the class attendance. Okay, scan attendance, HD. Okay, so uh, kehadiran itu adalah dia punya behavioral engagement lah. Okay, completed the assignments on time. Uh, 
um, assignment hantar, homework hantar, task buat, kita ada masalah. So that is behavioral. A respond to questions during the live classes. Kita tanya, dia bagi respon. Okay, even yes or no pun, consider, uh, consider uh, respond. Okay, cognitive. How do we measure the cognitive? Okay, basically, uh, can be seen in terms of the quality of the assignment. Okay, we know the level of the understanding um, and also the level of interaction during the live class. Uh, we can see adakah dia uh, faham sikit-sikit je ataupun dia betul-betul faham. Okay, we can see okay, based on the, the interaction okay, between us and them. Okay, level of participation in the discussion. Maybe we put the uh, discussion uh, thread in the e-learning okay, post um, uh, questions and can we can see. Okay, in terms of their ideas, how they justify the reasons, um, uh, justification and so on. So, kita boleh check lah the cognitive level. Adakah biasa-biasa ataupun uh, behavior, uh, behavioral sahaja. Just uh, give, give, give the, give the answer, that's it. Tak ada uh, um, idea yeah, yang, yang out of uh, class context. Okay, emotional part. Yeah, emotional part, uh, as I've mentioned before, hard to be measured in the online classes unless we have one-to-one uh, -one interaction with them. Okay, one-to-one -one interaction, or maybe we have a proper survey. Okay, uh, we ask them, uh, how do you feel about this? What What do you think about this? And we can know. Okay, um, otherwise it is um, very hard okay, to be measured in the online classes. Okay. And um, um, back to the uh, question uh, from Dr. Hazira just now. Okay, we have a student who show up in the class, um, but uh, they not respond to us. Senyap je dalam kelas. Okay, kalau tanya pun tak ada, diam tak ada. But completed. Okay, completed all the tasks. The assignment kita letak dekat e-learning, hantar. Uh, homework, okay, tak ada masalah. So what do you think? What do you think the type of engagement of this student have? Okay, class attend tapi tak ada uh, interaction dengan kita. Okay, uh, did not respond to us but completed uh, the task. Okay, so what do you think? Behavioral, cognitive, emotional ataupun none of them. So B, C, E or N. Let, let, let us see uh, what is your opinion. Again, in the chat room. We have, a, I think, a comment to our student. Come to the class, barely speak, um, yeah, barely respond, but completed all the tasks. So what do you think? B, C, E, or N for none? Okay, so none B of for three. behavioral, C yeah. for cognitive, E for emotional, and N for none. For none. Okay, so we are waiting for your response. So I believe uh, our participants today uh, have all these type of engagements, right? Was <laughs> it emotional? Dr. Shazirawati, apa soalan yes. dia? Yes. Uh, we have a type of student who come to the class, attendance ada lah, scan attendance, ada, ada nama dekat attendance, um, but didn't have the interaction with us, didn't respond to our question in the class, barely speak in the online class, honey, but uh, completed all the assignments. Kita suruh buat kerja, dihantar. But we don't have uh, interaction dengan dia. So B, C, E or N for none, none of these three. To sign, so Alan. No right or wrong answer. Susah lah juga. Duduk bila dia tak satu tu ha. No right or yeah, betul. No right. Tak sure term tu. Okay. The B, behavior. Okay, so it's okay. Yeah. Um, uh, because sometimes we are confused between just on task versus engaged, positively engaged. Okay, so macam student tadi, dia datang kelas, macam behavioral lah. Okay, they completed the assignment, 
ya yeah, behavioral tapi dia tak ada respon kita tanya dia tak ada tak ada bagi dia respon so the engagement is not that so seems like this student is just on task okay just on task this student who are just on task do task because they have to do something out of fear tak buat tak ada makah so this type of student basically yang jenis tanya is this one graded ah jenis macam ni lah okay just on task Okay, kalau tak tak graded tu dia lambat buat ataupun tak buat langsung. Okay, and then uh, students who are really engaged okay, is the one who connect with the learning, uh, high motivated. Okay, always want to know. Um, maksudnya dia just nak tahu lebih lah. Okay, always want to know. So these are um, um, the term that I uh, uh, came through when I uh, search uh, uh, regarding the students' engagement. Just on task versus positively engaged. And I think um, Um, for our student, ramai yang on the just on task. Okay, just on task saja. Okay, so ini uh, how how do we see lah uh, the two types of student tu, just on task and positive engaged. So just on task student ni, uh, uh, for example, he submit the assignment on time. So kita tak ada masalah pun dengan tu. Okay, it's uh, okay enough for us. But the uh, the student who are positively engaged with the learning process. Okay, submit the assignment on time, bagus, okay, and exceed the minimum requirement. So, quality dia lebih, okay, the, uh, apa yang dihantar tu, dia, dia bagi lebih daripada minimum requirement. So, we can see the behavior ada dekat situ, the submitting, and the cognitive lah, okay, the cognitive part. Ataupun uh, we have task mungkin uh, uh, write, okay, we ask them to write response in in the discussion. So just on task student, dia bagi satu respon, dah okay. Dah lah, settle lah bahagian dia. Okay, and but the student who are engaged, okay, engaged with the, the learning process, and he will or she will revisit, okay, revisit the that discussion to respond to others ataupun to see uh, apa orang cakap tentang response dia. Okay, so they revisit balik. Right, and maybe kita ada Uh, students yang just ask questions within the scope of class content. Okay, kita bagi soalan, mungkin dia ada tak faham tapi uh, still within the class content je soalan dia. But the, the one who are positively engaged, they ask questions and show curiosity, desire to know. Dia nak tahu lebih. Okay, dia tanya, uh, uh, kalau macam ni macam mana? What if this? What if that? Okay, so uh, they show the behavioral type of engagement, they have the cognitive part and mungkin ada emotional part dekat situ lah. We can see the excitement, yeah, the, uh, the have fun of doing doing the uh, learning activities. Okay, so that's the uh, um, uh, how we differentiate between just on task and uh, positively engaged student lah. So our aim here today is to improve. I think we already have the engagement point with the student but how are we going to improve? Okay, by the uh, just on task student to the positively engaged student. Okay, so that's it. Back to you. Okay, so uh, I'm still curious, what's the answer? Just on task means non-engagement? Uh, so I think it is between like behavioral, yes, okay, some part and another part is just on task but not yet positively engaged, right? Yeah. All right. So now um, to the essence of uh, this, uh, to this sharing, as we move forward towards the advancement of our teaching and learning techniques, I think we should see or think how we can produce uh, more students on the right column, positively engaged, uh, rather than on the first column, just on task or in between. We want to... Uh, Uh, make them positive, uh, positively engaged. So what do you think are our strategies? All right. Mm. Um, so um, I just um, going to give here a simple strategies, okay, simple strategies to improve from just on task, okay, to the positively engaged student, okay. Um, our challenge okay, in students' engagement In, in the context of online, okay, in the context of online setting ni, is basically to transform, transform our digital resources. Kita ada ni, what we have in the online setting ni, digital resources dengan ILEO lah, kan? 
Okay, we have the how do we transform our digital resources from direct instruction like okay, activities to something that can lead towards the three component study. How can we design lah basically? How can we design our learning materials so that kita boleh kata the behavioral part, the cognitive part, and the emotional part. Maybe okay, not uh, all of them, but we try our best to tailor our learning material to the three components too. Okay, so for example, I just give you the example. Okay, I don't know how to put into the uh, social science context. Okay, so I just give you the strategies in terms of examples. Okay, what we can do in the class. Okay? So for this one, for example, so we have this. This is the instruction based activities. We have the live class and we say, okay, after this live class, I would like all of you to answer three questions. And after you have done, please share the solutions in the Telegram group. So in this case, the barrier yang awal-awal tadi kita, kita tengok, which barrier that can uh, be minimized by doing this adalah the internet connection. Okay, so students with a limited uh, internet tadi, so they're happy lah. They're, the live class, uh, separuh je maybe, one hour. And then another one hour, we do the asynchronous, the offline, okay, offline part in the telegram, in the WhatsApp group. Okay, but what can we do better to tailor this instruction-like activities ni to the three components tadi, behavior, cognitive, dengan emotional. Okay, because by doing this, what, what can we expect? Kalau kita, kita bagi je instruction macam ni, yeah, we can expect student yang pandai-pandai je lah yang akan share the solutions nanti dekat, dekat telegram tu. Yang lain mungkin um, tak buat atau copy ataupun dia dah pergi mana-mana je lah. Sebab kita like giving them freedom. Dah habis dah kelas. Okay, uh, you have three three solution, three questions. Ni, you buat lah bila bila. Okay, something like that lah. So not all of them will participate. Okay, bila kita buat uh, kita bagi instruction based macam ni. So what can we do better? Okay, so we should have a structure and guided instruction using appropriate tools. So our aim here, yeah, even though it is offline, yeah, offline uh, learning process kita still want to connect with them in a timely manner lah. We are still in the uh, uh, um, class time frame. So kita tak nak buat di luar lah because it's going to be another uh, extra hours for us. So we are still in the um, uh, class time frame. Okay, kita, kita bagi dia freedom untuk buat okay, within the time. Tapi at the same time, we still want to connect with them. Okay, so kita tak nak uh, after uh, 30 minutes, uh, kita, kita pun panggil. Okay, siapa yang nak share? Anything, uh, anyone want to share? So adalah top students akan share. Okay, so the engagement, the quality of the engagement is not uh, tak bagus sangat. Okay, in that case. Okay, so what we can do, we can ask questions okay, in, uh, in the offline session that can promote them to think. So ini benda yang kita kena design lah. Kita kena design at the first place. Okay, so that kita boleh cater benda-benda uh, ni. Okay, we want to force them indirectly to participate. So we need to think of the appropriate tools. Okay, appropriate tools to do this. So what um, I've done in the class, I just use the Telegram poll. Okay, the Telegram have this uh, feature, the poll. We create the poll. How, how do we, we want to connect with them? Okay, using the poll. Poll ni kita, kita tanya question dengan option. So dia akan tick je lah, pilih kat mana. Okay, so uh, uh, tadi we have the task for them, okay, untuk dia jawab within the time. But at, uh, within the time too, we still want to connect with them. Supaya dia tak pergi all around the world, okay, dekat dia punya phone and so on, tengok YouTube and so on. We don't want that, okay. So, um, kita create a poll based on tiga soalan yang kita ada tadi. Kita design lah kita punya uh, uh, interaction with them. Okay, for example, for questions one, okay, we put the option, I managed to get it right. I did wrong at the first attempt, okay, but managed to get it right in the next attempt. So students 
dapat pull tu dia akan klik lah dekat mana dia. First option, second option, third option. So based on that, we know uh, first maybe we can measure the level of understanding. So kita bila when we uh, click on the view result, we can see the list of student with the names. So kita tahu siapa yang dah jawab, siapa yang tadi salah tapi akhirnya betul. So you can see the, the cognitive uh, uh, level of them lah. Okay. And then the behavioral part, we can see the uh, respond itu, the behavioral part lah. So the engagement is there. Okay, so after some time, uh, based on the result too, then we can proceed with the with the conversation lah. Okay, dengan dia orang. Okay, and then um, uh, kita tengok siapa yang betul tu, kita ask them to share. So we cannot afford ev uh, for everyone to to share the solutions. Okay, so based on the result, kita can pick. Okay, so but the point here is kita force the student to be in the process. Okay, and then uh, after some time, kita buat lagi poll. Poll ni senang je. It can be uh, uh, done spontaneously yeah, dalam dalam chat itu. Okay, for question two, for example, to promote the cognitive. Okay, so I put like uh, you, you you need to do something okay, based on question two. Okay, but first of all, kita kena tahu dulu lah. Okay, if you want to uh, promote the cognitive engagement, so we need to design back to the problem tadi. Okay, kita kena give the problem that test on the cognitive, uh, the, can promote the cognitive thing lah. Okay, and then uh, by doing this, okay, another, another uh, yang bagusnya, okay, walaupun student mungkin dijawab salah at the first place, but because of the interaction yang dia ada ni, so dia, dia akan trigger dia, oh, something wrong with, the, with, with my answer, something wrong with my calculation. Okay, what what is C for example? So what they think in the in the poll to other C, uh, C is 15, so they can go through. Okay, so they are in the process. So young student uh, awal-awal tadi tak buat pun, okay, sebab dia ingat kita lepas je dia, so dia akan rush, oh, let's should I do something, okay, in the, in the, in the WhatsApp, uh, in the Telegram group. So we are forcing them okay, to join the, uh, the discussion, okay, the learning process, okay. And then um, kita kena spice up a bit lah, okay, to create the assignment. This is the emotional part because tadi kan, the emotional part is uh, hard to measure, hard to uh, be seen pun, okay. So kita, kita try, okay, based on uh, the, the, the tools lah, based on the tools, okay. So kita spice up a bit lah, okay. So you can see bila kita buat macam ni, so they are actually starting replying with the emoji, uh, replying with the uh, memes, yeah? so ada laugh here and there. So kita tahu lah, yeah? kita boleh uh, kurangkan dia punya stress on the task yang sebenarnya kita suruh dia buat. Okay, so we cater on the emotional part by doing this. This is just uh, example anyway. Okay, so the point here is we I think I, I believe we already have the activities. It's just that how do do we want to design the supaya the pergi kepada the three components of the engagement study so that we can engage better with the students. Yeah, that's strategy number one. This is strategy number two. This is just on task activities. So this is me to 2018 giving uh, the assignment to the student. Just put in the e-learning. Okay, bagi soalan, instruction semua dalam tu, that's it, itu saja. So, uh, type of student that we will produce is just on task saja. Okay, macam dia jawab soalan je, lepas tu send back, uh, attach back the, the solutions to us. So, just on task. Okay, how can we do better to tailor to the um, behavioral, to the cognitive and the emotional part? So, this is me... Uh, 2021. Eh? So for uh, one assignment, so ada banyak benda. Ada banyak benda. So uh, at a, again, at the first place, we design. If we want to test on the cognitive part, eh, kita buatlah in, in the uh, assignment itself, the question itself, that going to uh, uh, test on the cognitive part. If you want to try to promote the emotional part, okay, so maybe we have the peer, peer uh, evaluation, self-evaluation. Okay, so we have this thing, okay, uh, um, based on what we want to achieve, okay, what we want to improve in terms of engagement, 
Okay, and then uh, how do we force them? How do we force? Them? Again, tadi we have the just on task and uh, positively engaged student. So how do we force them to be um, positively engaged student? Okay, so we force in terms of uh, color assignment in the assignment rubrics tu tadi lah. Okay, so you can see, for example, uh, we have you know the first one here. Follow the instruction and have more minimum requirement. So this is uh, if the student do they not make a little so they are can work a little So along the process too, they are basically generating the cognitive uh, engagement. Okay, engagement is not really between us and them. Okay, between them and the learning activities and the learning material also. Okay. So kalau just uh, on task student, dia mungkin okay, minimum requirement okey lah. Asalkan hantar, okey. Memang ada pun, okay. Just on task. Even though we give this uh, rubric, we still ada student yang just on task sahaja. Okay, meet, uh, meet the minimum requirement sahaja. So we put in the rubrics to indirectly force them, okay. Uh, to promote the uh, engagement yang kita nak tadi. So to... Um, Yang kedua. Yang ketiga, another strategies. Okay. So ini mungkin um, uh, okay, kita buat self-reflection. So kita kata, okay, after the test, after the quiz, kita, based on your test one experience, write your feedback via Padlet. Padlet. So benda kat e-learning. Okay. So the barrier that can be minimized by doing this is maybe the social part lah. Yang, yang, yang utama ni, social part the shyness, the uh, language barrier, other students uh, yang uh, not have confidence to speak okay, in the class. Okay? So kita bagi dia platform so that they can write. Okay? You can put the uh, uh, emotional uh, feeling okay, in the written uh, written activities. Okay? That on the barrier part. Okay? We can minimize that. But how can we do better? Yeah, yeah, they boleh, boleh, boleh bagi. Yeah. Alright. Okay. okay, so. Okay, again, I have, I have the internet connection problem here. Uh, now okay. Just okay, okay. alright. Okay. okay, so back to this one, back to this activity. Okay, what can we do better? Yeah, to cater this, uh, the, the three components uh, of engagement that okay? So this is what uh, I've done yeah, earlier in, in my class. Instead of, you know, giving them freedom to put anything you know, on the feedback, so I, I asked them based on your activity. So this one uh, after they have taken the quiz, okay? After you have taken the quiz one, so write down one thing that I would like uh, to improve upon is Okay, so they akan bagi. So if we put this kind of uh, question, basically we are indirectly, okay, ask them to think about uh, the problem yang dia buat, okay, yeah, yang dia ada masa dia buat the task and how are you going to, to, uh, to solve the problem, okay? How are you going to improve? Later, okay. So it to um, uh, the way we ask them, okay. Rather than kita kata, okay, give your feedback, okay, give your feedback based on your uh, test one. So if like that, they are basically can maybe blame internet connection, okay. They blame soalan susah, okay. Giving feedback, okay. They uh, try to blame uh, anything else, but they cannot. They and not think about how they are going to improve. So kita sebenarnya um, create the self-reflections tu. Kita tanya, at the first place, kita tanya ourselves juga lah what we want to do with this self-reflection from our student. Sebenarnya kita nak dapat apa? Kita just nak tengok saja dia menulis ke? Okay, lepas perasaan ke? Ataupun we want to have something about it. 
okay because um the psychology part ni um bila uh, kata student state their problem lepas tu kita bagi cadangan untuk selesaikan okay mungkin dia akan argue balik our our recommendation tu rather than okay kalau kita bagi dia macam ni okay one thing i would like to improve upon they are basically suggesting to themselves apa yang dia kena buat ah uh, so rather than kita cakap kat dia oh next time you have to do this okay lepas tu belakang kita they have yeah, another argument uh, about our recommendation so if we ask them something like this so they are willingly lah so ini oh this is this is my problem and this is what i need to do next time okay so we cater on the emotional part Yeah, because on the reflection mungkin dia 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 kita nampaklah dia happy with the with the task uh, and then also the cognitive part on the the learning material itself lah mungkin macam student ni they find out dia still ada problem dengan konsep of a certain topic and this student have a problem with the time management so kita nampak the the connection uh, the engagement in terms of emotional and the cognitive part Okay, itu uh, under uh, self reflection. Um, so self re reflection ni is basically a powerful tool sebenarnya okay, in the learning process. Okay, so what student uh, fikir. Okay, but the our question should encourage them to think about how should they improve. Okay, in in their learning, bukan sekadar melepas perasaan saja and then that's it habis dari situ. Okay. And uh, kita kena tailor dia, eh? the questions kita tu tailor dia so that uh, they can think eh? uh, how to improve. Okay? So maybe uh, daripada kita tanya, okay, so from uh, scale 1 to 10, okay, rate uh, your level of understanding after today's session. Sebenarnya so, saya pun buat juga uh, on, on the left part ni. Eh? Tapi um, okay, along the, uh, from time to time, we try to improve okay, on the self-reflection -re uh, questions. Ni. Okay, so we can move to uh, something like reflect on your thinking, learning, okay, your work today, your task today, what were you most proud of? So ini yang, yang soalan tu, I want to tackle on the emotional. Okay, uh, what were you most proud of? So the, mungkin the stress, do, do the task, tapi bila dia fikir apa ah, eh, yang aku boleh banggakan hari ni So dia ada, you know, uh, dia punya feeling tu lah dia boleh gali Sebenarnya oh dia ada happy, dia dia happy okay. Dia uh, uh, sebenarnya fun do the, the task okay. uh, Maybe stress but under positive stress okay. um, Ataupun soalan kita, do you satisfy with your work for this task? So dia mungkin jawab yes, okay. jawab no I could have done better. So habis setakat tu je. Okay. Then kita tanya, does your work truly reflect your effort? So dia akan fikir balik lah. Huh? Effort dia, adakah dia buat last minute? Yeah. So dia akan reflect balik dia punya work and then at the same time, kita harap itu trigger dia supaya okay next time I have to do this, I have to do that. Okay. Rather than okay satisfy je. I could have done better macam tu saja. Tapi tak ada Uh, what's next? Yeah, okay? what's next to be to be done? Okay, ataupun um, peer learning, peer learn based on uh, peer learning task on task one. Write your reflection. So bebas, yeah, bebas. Yeah, so kita boleh uh, tailor dia. Yeah, maybe kita tanya dia. See something positive about your peer. Yeah, so kita promote. Uh, ini again the emotional part. Okay, so um. Anything, any activities, my point here is anything, any activities that we want to have So kita kena fikir uh, apa yang kita nak lah daripada For example this one from self-reflection itu okay? Kita nak dia engage on the emotional part dia uh, We want to uh, them to be happy with their friends ke okay? So kita cuba Uh, ajak mereka supaya kita uh, dia gali on that part. Yeah, so sebenarnya dia akan discover oh sebenarnya this learning process ni bukanlah stressful semata-mata tapi ada benda lain yang dia discover. Okay so to under reflection and then uh, strategy number four we must respond to every task that we give them. Yeah I know maybe um, 
mungkin um, hard for us ya yeah, with the uh, um, kerja-kerja lain kan yeah, yang kita ada but I think this is very important ya yeah, we must respond to every task that we give them otherwise kita tak payah bagi okay because um, by respond to them okay by respond to the task okay, um, we they actually know that we care okay we care and they can get feedback on the task betul salah mana nak kena bet, mana nak kena improve okay so dia dapat immediate feedback so they feel good about it walaupun dia buat salah dia tahu okay that we actually uh, betul-betul tengok dia punya kerja okay and we can encourage them to participate even though the task is uh, ungraded so giving feedback to them giving respond to them Okay, it's very important. Okay, if we cannot give individual feedback, okay, kita bagi collective feedback. Okay, kita tengok in general uh, the task itu, then kita bagi feedback in the class in general. Kalau kita tak mampu individually. Okay, and this is one of my student. Okay, ini homework saja, one one example. Um, but because of the feedback, dia buat banyak kali sebab dia salah banyak kali. And uh, in the process, kita tak bagi dia jawapan terus. Kita try to uh, uh, ajak dia supaya dia berfikir lah, berfikir on uh, her own, on their own. Tapi within the uh, um, uh, learning context tu lah, uh, learning material. So this student, dia resubmit, resubmit banyak kali. Okay, four to five times to get the correct answer. So every time tu kita just, um, kita just, um, Okay, recheck this part. Okay, what do you want to do about this? This this, this part is wrong. So the, the communication, the, saya dengan budak ni, basically replying the comments saja, replying the comment. But because of uh, dia tahu kita actually care about the task itu tadi, walaupun just homework, just soalan, soalan biasa saja. Because but because of the feedback, kita bagi feedback, dia seronok nak 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 betulkan. Okay. Rather than kita bagi feedback, kita bagi task, dia, dia orang submit dan kita biar saja. Tak ada apa-apa. Okay. Mungkin the first time they are okay, kita buat. The second time they are started to, uh, lecturer ni bukan check pun. Okay. Buat je lah ataupun just uh, ask from the friends, ni buat macam mana. Okay. Salin then just upload. Okay. Dalam lama dia rasa macam okay. It, it is okay to just on task sahaja rather than yeah, uh, positively engage with us, right? And um, um, I come across this book, okay, how to give effective feedback uh, to your student. Okay? She says that if you give feedback, effective feedback to the students, you actually double the rate of learning. And this is true. Lah. Okay. Kalau kita tengok this Amira ni, Okay, if I didn't give uh, feedback to her, so what happened, dia tak tahu pun dia salah. Dan, dan macam tu je lah, the first submission saja, Then that's it. So dia tak belajar apa-apa. Okay, but if we give the positive feedback, okay, effective feedback okay, to the student, kita promote dia supaya dia belajar dan belajar. So we double the rate of learning. Okay, so the suggestion is, you can cut back on the volume of assignments okay, and increase your feedback on those okay, that you have given and you will be saying that you are actually double the rate of learning. So kita bagi banyak-banyak pun okay, tapi kita tak bagi feedback so mungkin impact dia tak ada. Tapi kita bagi sikit uh, a task tapi every time kita bagi feedback individual or collectively. Okay, then we can um, uh, promote Yeah, we can double the rate of learning because students will will think that oh, ni lecturer ni memang check kerja kita lah satu-satu. So, they akan encourage. Encourage them to do even though kita kata ini ungraded. Yeah? Tapi, uh, kita nak dia hantar, for example, macam tu. So, they are willing to do. Because kita, dia, dia akan tahu kita care for them. Okay? Kita check kerja dia. Okay. Kalau kita tak check individual, dia tahu, okay, nanti lecturer akan bagi collective, collective uh, 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 feedback in the class. Okay, so for this part, actually, um, they um, inspire, banyak inspire from our uh, senior-senior lah. 
yeah? Prof Niza, for example, when, when we were a student, almost every week at the assignments, yeah? every week at the, at the homework lah, senang cerita, homework. Yeah? Uh, then kita dapat balik, kita dapat balik feedback in a, in a uh, timely manner lah. Okay. Uh, Prof Shah, for example, every week ada uh, uh, assignment, assignment task. Walaupun markah dia satu je, markah dia satu. But, tapi kita selalu dapat balik kita punya uh, task tu within the uh, appropriate time frame. Yeah, I remember Prof Shah said, if you cannot return uh, uh, the, the homework ke apa-apa kerja lah kita bagi to the student within two weeks time, we are not good enough in the time management to improve Shah kata. Okay, so um, from time to time, uh, saya pun try jugalah within the two weeks time. Okay, otherwise dia kata nanti benda tu dah tak relevant. Okay, for example, if you give the task related to the test one. Tapi kita biar dia sampai test one dah habis. So, benda tu jadi not meaningful to the students anymore. Okay, so we give the task and give feedback within the time frame yang sepatutnya lah. Okay, but um, maybe for maybe for the test, mungkin kita pun uh, uh, tak mampu within the two weeks time. Okay, tapi at least mungkin kita try uh, uh, section ini kita possible to give in two weeks time. But under section mungkin exit. Okay, so kita, kita faham kita ada banyak. Um, uh, task lain juga kan. Okay, but it is good advice juga from uh, Prof Shah uh, sebelum ni. Okay, so itu um, under uh, strategies. Right, um, so uh, what I want to uh, say here is because I you know we already have the learning materials. Okay, we already know the activities. Basically, on the part of minimize the barrier tu, we are okay. Kita dah tahu dah, student ada problem ini, this is our, this is our move, this is our, uh, this is our plan. But how we are going to design that learning material so that we can engage better with the student. Okay, so, so itu je kita punya, um, kita punya uh, improvement kita should be on that part lah. Okay, kita kena tengok balik the uh, activities yang kita nak buat and how do we cater uh, to the three components uh, of the behavioral, the cognitive and also the emotional part because uh, in the online learning ni kita tak jumpa dia, kita tak nampak dia so it is very hard to to promote lah the, the, the especially the cognitive and emotional so kita kena design benda tu okay, based on our learning activities okay so uh, I think itu the among uh, the strategies that we can do to improve okay point here is to improve we already have the engagement but we, we want to improve further on the engagement yeah then that's that, zira okay wow uh, a very positive sharing from dr shazira so hopefully one day i also can share that uh, i am inspired by dr shazira my <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, I agree with you that uh, we as a lecturer have uh, our responsib uh, responsibility to make sure that uh, our, student, uh, our students are not just on task but positively engaged and it is very important to deal with the emotional parts especially in this uh, online learning, uh, during this online learning. Okay, and uh, I, uh, I like your approach to ask about the students' opinions on how to improve. Okay, so it means that uh, we don't only expect them to improve, we also uh, want to improve our uh, teaching because uh, I believe everybody, especially the students at their age, uh, are very, uh, they, they will be very happy and feel appreciated when they can voice out their opinion, right? That's okay. right. So last question to wrap up. After all of these strategies, how do we know when students are engaged? Yeah, um, that's, um, um, 
tricky part to determine because of the online setting and because of the online setting rather than uh, uh, other than the behavioral part which can be seen clearly but the uh, the cognitive and the the emotional part is quite hard to be seen whether the students are really engaged or not with us okay but um i believe there are some indicators to that lah. Yeah, some indicators to see whether our students are positively engaged with us uh, or not um I mean, in terms of behavior, we can check uh, in terms of the degree or the frequency of the students uh, virtually uh, turn up in, in the telegram. Okay, so we can see from the log in the e-learning, kan? Uh, e-learning, -e sorry, bukan telegram, in the e-learning, okay? they are the log. So, maksudnya, kalau, uh, it means that even though we didn't ask anything, we didn't give instruction, kita tengok student tu they virtually turn up ataupun tak in the e-learning. So that's one of the indicators. But at the first place, we have to consistently put uh, materials lah in the e-learning. Okay, so kita, uh, we can check, okay? that's the indicator. We can check from, from the log in the e-learning. So kalau kita tengok, oh, these students uh, uh, log into the e-learning frequently. In fact, kita boleh tengok dia pergi kat mana, which module yang kita letakkan. Okay, but at the first place, again, we need to design lah what we want to put in the in the uh, e-learning itu. Kalau kita tak buat apa-apa, dia masuk, dia tak dapat apa-apa. So, mungkin dia akan demotivate. So, we are not promoting anything in that case. Okay. So, itu uh, one of indicator in terms of behavioral uh, engagement. Okay. And the, uh, uh, um, the degree or the the frequency the student uh, access our uh, uh, learning materials lah. Okay. And then um, maybe um, we can sense the engagement, okay, um, by feedback yang student bagi, okay. Um, again, based on the uh, reflection, self-reflection questions, kita boleh analyze, okay. Itu je lah indicator kita, okay, because kita tak nampak dia secara direct, okay, tak, kita tak communicate them secara direct tapi those are the things yang kita boleh create so that kita semacam kita boleh measure dia punya emotional, kita boleh faham, kita boleh tahu dia punya emotional engagement. Okay. Um, um, uh, betul lah, but I agree lah the emotional and the uh, cognitive part itu uh, hard to be measured but again um, the point here is mungkin kita tak boleh measure, kita tak nampak but what we can do, kita boleh tailor, kita boleh tailor kita punya activities that promoting those three. So mungkin tak boleh nampak tapi we understand that if the student going through the process yang kita design itu, okay, they are actually developing that engagement. They are developing the cognitive, they are developing the emotional part. But in terms of measurement, mungkin kita tak nampak secara direct pun. Okay, um, other than, you know, uh, other than the quality of the assignments, quality of the task yang, yang dia buat tu mungkin kita boleh nampak lah. But in general tu, we cannot really uh, measure. Tapi kita kena, uh, kita kena again, kita punya design of uh, learning activities tu lah. So kita harap when the student do that, they are actually developing it. Dan mungkin kita tak, tak nampak secara direct pun in our course but along the process of the learning tu, they are actually developing it. Okay, um, kita, um, kita producing uh, uh, the students who have these values, these values in there. We have the cognitive, cognitive level, we have the uh, uh, emotional uh, engagement and so on. Okay, so to, um, to wrap up the, the sessions for today. Hazira. Hazira. All right, sorry. Uh, so <laughs> thank you very much for a very good uh, sharing session. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so uh, for now, uh, we would like to open for any question or suggestion or recommendation from all the participants. So if you have any question to ask Dr. Shazira, uh, please feel free to do so. Okay, and Dr. Farhana give a suggestion. We can check student feedback EPP code for members to listen. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I agree on that. And we have to be very open to about the comments, right? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, for those who have not uh, filled in your attendance, please fill in your attendance. The link is given in the chat room. So anybody else who has a question or suggestion? Maybe you can share. Yeah, salam. Uh, first of all, uh, terima kasih Dr. Cezawati for your satisfaction. session. So, I'm very interested on the telegram sebenarnya. Yang poor tu. Yeah. Okay, mm. so uh, yeah, you have mentioned before this, uh, regarding mm. to the response to your students, it means that you give a question and you respond uh, everyone ke? Each of your, seorang ke? You respond to... Um, ada yang uh, every individual, mm -hmm. okay? Ada yang collective. For example, if we post, if we give, if we give the task like uh, open-ended questions, so for example, we put in the padlet, ke? so okay. we ask them to, to give their opinion. So, they berbalas, ber, ber, berbagi respon on the padlet. So, kita yeah. baca, kita baca, but we give the collective, collective uh, feedback in the class. Okay, kalau kita, we ask them, uh, we ask them to do the task and submit in the e-learning in, e in the Google Classroom ke, so kita ada individual submission, so maybe we can, we can have the individual feedback. Okay, okay. So it depends. Uh -huh. If we, kita mampu to give the individual feedback, then tu lebih bagus lah. But, okay, we understand lah kita punya constraint juga. If we cannot give individual feedback, so kita mungkin boleh roughly, okay, tengok uh, uh, half of the uh, uh, submissions from our student and we give uh, general comments, uh, general feedback, okay? Because uh, they have the hard copy with them, kan? So, benda tu masih ada lagi dengan dengan orang. So, when we give the collective feedback, so, they don't believe check valid. So, we, we can uh, uh, say to them, okay, if you do like this, then you need to, yeah, you need to uh, revise back, you need to correct back. So, they, they can, they can what? Okay, isn't it that kalau macam contohnya, you give, uh, give the questions during the class and your feedback after mm -hmm. the class ke macam mana, Doctor? Um, not really, uh, it depends. If I give the, like, the homework uh, for the weekend, Okay. okay, for the weekend. So maybe I'll spend one week, okay, uh, to give the feedback lah. Okay, uh, so okay. sekarang um, kita check tiga, so kita return balik, okay, tiga. So individual feedback macam tu. But again, within the time frame. So if we do the task regarding the test one, for example, so kita janganlah biar sehingga habis test one. Okay? Mm. Uh, Itu so yang Dr. Mention tadi lah. Within, yeah, yeah. Uh, the maximum within uh, two weeks lah, the response tu. Mm. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Soalan dari Dr. Farhana, boleh bagi contoh engagement yang dibuat? Engagement yang dibuat? Tadilah. <laughs> the, the examples. Uh, examples tadi. So, this are... Uh, Assignments, uh, poll, telegram uh, poll, poll, right? So, so, itu yang I've mentioned just now. Kita sebenarnya ada. Kita sebenarnya ada benda tu. We do the self-reflection. We do the assignment. Cumanya kita kena uh, design balik lah so, supaya kita tailor. Supaya, oh, so, sudah ni uh, ada tak ada emotional engagement? How do we want to tailor on the uh, emotional part? So, kita kita ubahlah kita punya design of the learning activities but the, the activities is already there with us. Hmm. Uh, doctor nak tanya satu lagi boleh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, based yeah. on your opinion experience, which uh, which uh, platform yang you refer lah? Telegram ke, e-learning ke, ataupun Google Classroom ke, which one more better for you to get the feedback from the students? Uh, fit, uh, feedback? I mean your activity lah, activity yang macam tadi kalau telegram ada poll kalau uh, tak, uh. So, um, it depends uh, on the activities juga So basically I play around with the padlet, okay, padlet And uh, on the submission, kalau submission, I prefer uh, the Google Classroom Okay, the Google Classroom oh, okay. untuk submission uh, Sebab so kita boleh return the individual feedback uh, dengan senang Okay, kalau uh, self-reflection tu, kalau kita nak secara kolektif tu, so mungkin the padlet. Okay, um, so itulah uh, the first place oh, okay. tu uh, kita design lah, kita design. Then kita, faham. kita, kita kita tools mana yang sesuai. Okay, faham, faham. So depending on the activity kita nak buat lah yeah. kan. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. Alright. Okay, uh, any more questions? Or... Uh, 
opinions or an, anybody want to share regarding the students' yeah. engagement strategies? Okay, uh, so uh, once you fill in your attendance, you will get your e-certificate in your email. Okay, so um, if uh, there is no more question, we will uh, go to the photo session. Uh, uh, I would like to ask everybody to uh, turn on the camera so that uh, we can take a photo. Okay. Uh, still waiting because others want to okay cari to dong huh okay cari to dong okay <laughs> all right uh who is this the uh, zaito power kaida if you want to the norma All right, that's great. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, ready? Ready? One, two, three. Okay, one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, freestyle. <laughs> okay, Dr. Kushari. Everybody look at Dr. Kushayri. All right. Uh, okay, so if uh, if you if you uh, have not received the certificate in your email, please uh, fill in the uh, registration form again. Okay. Um, so uh, 